Hey everyone, so today we're gonna to be talking about soda. We've recently been chatting a lot about how to help your kids ditch the sweet obsession and have a healthy relationship with food, including sweets. And I've gotten a lot of questions on my Instagram page about how I approach soda and if I approach it in the same way. So we're answering that here. If you've missed the videos or podcast episodes where I go over how to help your kids have a healthy relationship with sweets, as well as my Q and A answering common sweets questions that parents have submitted, I will link those either if you're on YouTube in the caption or if you're on podcast in the podcast notes below. Now let's talk about some science pieces and one example of my own personal experience before we move on into chatting about how I approach soda in my house. So first, the science is pretty clear that we see an association between increased consumption of sugar sweetened beverages and medical conditions like heart disease, uh, diabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and dental caries or cavities. So that's the first thing I want you to keep in mind. And second thing I want you to keep in mind is that while sweets are ubiquitous, Soda might be slightly less ever present in our society. So those are the two kind of factors that I'm taking into consideration here. So do I approach soda the same way as I approach sweets? So in our household, I try my very best to help my child have a healthy relationship with sweets by doing things like serving sweets on the plate, avoiding a restriction mindset, allowing my child to have unlimited amounts of sweets when I choose to serve them and serving sweets often so it doesn't put my kiddo into like a scarcity mode where I make her feel like sweets aren't going to be served that often so when she does when she is exposed to it she doesn't feel the need to eat high volumes because she knows that they're going to be present in her diet on a regular basis so those are the strategies that I implement we know the science is pretty clear on restriction leading to increased seeking behaviors for that type of food. So that is what I'm trying to avoid here. That being said, I do not serve soda in my house, nor do I plan on serving it on a regular basis to my daughter while she's living with us. So I am not using those sweet strategies with soda. So why am I doing that? You might be thinking, okay, well, Dr. Arnold, you're talking all the time about avoiding a restriction mindset, but if you restrict soda from your daughter, she's gonna have that scarcity mindset and she's going to have increased seeking behaviors towards soda. And yeah, that might be true. So what I am doing is taking that into consideration, also taking into consideration that she's not really exposed to soda a ton at home. Um, she's never exposed to soda at school. Um, she's not exposed to soda at her school. They don't serve it to the kids. Um, at restaurants, I still decide what's on the menu, so she's not exposed to it there. So the only place that she would really be exposed to soda would be like at a birthday party. We don't really do soda at family functions either. So yes, I am increasing the risk that she's going to have seeking behaviors towards soda. However, due to the research behind the negative health implications of sugar sweetened beverages and the fact that she's not exposed to soda a ton, I feel okay with making that decision, knowing that I might have to take steps in the future to help her not have like an obsession with soda. Um, so that's just a decision that we make in our household, a parenting decision. You could decide to take the same approach to sweets if you wanted, you're the parent and it's your prerogative to decide how to approach sweets and soda and sugar with your kids. However, I find that sweets in general are so ever present in today's society and our kids usually aren't home with us 24 seven and they're getting exposed to sweets a lot outside of the home. So if we don't teach them how to approach sweets in a way that is like giving them a neutral view of sweets, then we risk throwing them into that like sweet obsession mode or that scarcity mindset. But because soda is not, my kids aren't exposed to soda a ton and I don't foresee them being exposed to soda a ton, I don't really run the, as much of a risk as them with them developing like a soda obsession as I would a sweets obsession. So I don't serve soda in the house. 
I don't see um, any benefit from sugar sweetened beverages in my child's diet. I do see a lot of benefit from sweets in their diet. Sweets are something that like my husband enjoys to cook. They have like cultural importance for us, birthday cakes, sweets at weddings, etc. So like there's lots of sweets at like Christmas cookies or something that my family does a lot. So if we were to remove sweets from the diet, we would definitely see like an, an absence. But if we were to remove soda from the diet, we don't, there's no negative for us. So that's another reason why I don't see any, um, or why we choose to not to serve soda in our house because we don't really experience any negatives from not offering it to my kids. So, you know, there's no like black or white when it comes to helping your kids develop a healthy relationship with sweets. You really need to kind of look at the science, look at the recommendations that experts like myself make, and then tailor those recommendations to your family's specific needs because one recommendation isn't going to be applicable for every single family. Usually there are little tweaks that needs to be made. And for us, we do apply this healthy relationship with food, healthy relationship with sweets mentality with the exception of not serving soda. And I know the pros and cons of that and I'm happily making that decision. So that's how I serve, or that's how I approach it in my house. We don't serve it. I don't plan on serving it. When she's a tween or teen, will I allow her to order soda at a restaurant? Sure. Will I buy it at the grocery store and have it at home? Probably not. Maybe like every once in a while, if she asks for soda to be served at a birthday party, will I buy it? Sure, I have no problem with that, but that's not something that I'm gonna choose to stock in her house on a regular basis. So hope that answers your question about soda. Um, it's not all black and white. I did try to find if there was any research on restriction and like sugar restriction in kids related to seeking behaviors, looking at soda specifically, and I did not find that. So keep that in mind that these recommendations that I'm implementing in my house, there isn't like a clinical trial examining the positive pros and cons of taking this approach with soda. This is just, I'm me looking at the evidence on restriction in kids, on sugar in kids, and looking at what our family's specific needs are and soda itself and making a decision based off of that. So that is what I encourage you to do for your own family's unique needs as well. So there's my take on soda. Oh, 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 oh,